hydrometer testing and overview. There are two ways to determine the grain size distribution of a soil. The first is a sieve analysis, and the second is a hydrometer test. Although sieve analysis works well for particles larger than the number 200 sieve, it does not work at all for particles smaller than the number 200 sieve. For the finer clay and silt particles, the hydrometer test is a better test. ASTM D422 standardizes the test method for particle size analysis of soils. The hydrometer test measures grain size distribution by mixing the soil with water and monitoring the rate at which the soil particles settle out of suspension. Large particles settle quickly while small particles settle slowly. This picture shows sediment at the bottom of a hydrometer jar. Note that the larger particles are located at the bottom, having settled out first before the finer particles, which are at the top. The finest particles are still in suspension in the slurry. We describe this downward motion using Stokes' law. The velocity of the soil particles falling out of suspension is proportional to the square of the particle diameter. Therefore, large particles settle out much more quickly than small particles. In addition, we can determine the mass of solids in suspension by measuring the specific gravity of the slurry still in suspension. Measurements are usually conducted over a 24-hour period. Employing Stokes' law, we can determine the distribution of particles in this soil sample. For the test, a sample size of 50 grams is needed. If your sample contains a large percentage of soil larger than the number 200 sieve, then use about 100 grams. First weigh an empty evaporating dish, then add soil to the dish until the desired weight is acquired. Obtain a second sample of the same soil for moisture content measurement. Record all your values on your data sheet. To prevent individual soil particles from flocculating together, a small amount of an electrolyte known as a dispersing agent is added to the suspension. It has been found that polyphosphate compounds are generally the most effective dispersing agent. In your case, 5 grams of sodium hexametaphosphate is added to the sample. Place the soil in a beaker and add water, mixing together with a spatula until all the lumps are worked out and a uniform mixture is obtained. Transfer the mixture into one of the electric mixer cups. Wash all of the soil into the cup using a squirt bottle filled with deionized water. Then mix for about 10 minutes. Prepare two 1,000 milliliter graduated cylinders. First, a test cylinder containing 100 milliliters of deionized water, and second, a control cylinder containing 5 grams of sodium hexametaphosphate and 100 milliliters of deionized water. Obtain an ASTM type 151H hydrometer and carefully place it into the control cylinder. Do not use a type 152H hydrometer. When the mixing process is complete, immediately transfer the solution to the test cylinder. Then fill the cylinder to the 1,000 milliliter mark using deionized water. Place a rubber stopper over the end of the test cylinder and turn the cylinder upside down and back and forth for about a minute. You must shake the cylinder to place the soil in suspension. Make sure none of the soil remains stuck to the bottom of the cylinder. Once all the soil is in suspension, Place the test cylinder upright on a table. As soon as the cylinder has been placed upright, the soil particles begin to settle to the bottom. Carefully insert the hydrometer. You must take a series of measurements over a period of at least one hour. Follow the lab manual. Place a rubber stopper over the end of the test cylinder and turn the cylinder upside down and back and forth for about a minute. You must shake the cylinder to place the soil in suspension. Make sure none of the soil remains stuck to the bottom of the cylinder. Once all the soil is in suspension, 
place the test cylinder upright on a table. As soon as the cylinder has been placed upright, the soil particles begin to settle to the bottom. Carefully insert the hydrometer and start taking readings. You must take a series of measurements over a period of at least one hour. Follow the lab manual for the necessary time intervals. Record the clock to the nearest second because some readings need to be made within seconds of placing the test cylinder on the table. Check with your instructor to determine if it will be necessary for you to take additional measurements after 60 minutes. For each reading, you will need to compute the diameter of the soil particles that have settled to the bottom and the percent finer. The weight of solids is computed using the moisture content computed from your soil sample. Particle diameter is computed using the hydrometer readings and the percent finer is computed using the weight of solids calculated. From these measurements, you can plot your grain size distribution curve. This concludes this presentation.